a sourdough starter is not a hard process. Um, I know that there are a lot of different recipes and directions to do sourdough starter and they're all a little bit different. Some add sugar, some don't. Um, some add potato to it, some don't. And so there are many ways to do it. Um, if you've been researching how to do a sourdough starter, then you've probably gotten all kinds of different recipes and formulas and all kinds of everything. Um, so this is the way that I, this will be my third starter that I have started in this video. And um, I start my starters the same way every time. I'm not going to say this is the best way because I believe all those other ways work as well. But um, this is what works for me. And so, I mean, I, I remember investigating sourdough or really investigating anything, um, cooking anything, gardening anything. And there's so many different recipes and different ways to do it out there. And if you listen to one person or watch one video that says this is the best or this is the only way and they kind of go against each other a little bit. So I understand confusion, I understand frustration because everybody claims that their way is the best. I'm not going to say that my way is the best and it's definitely not the only way to do it. This is how I have done it. This, like I said, this is my third starter that I have made. And so this is just how I do it. This is what works for me. And this is what I know to share. Um, if there are other ways that you would like to try, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and look in other ways if, if you want to. But if you're tired of hearing different people say all kinds of different things, um, it, it happens that way because there is no just one way. So um, this is the way that I personally do it. It's worked for me. It's not the only way, it might not be the best way or the fastest way, but this this is a way to do it if you want to try it this way. So with that said, I'm going to try to <clears throat> get through this video without losing my voice. Um, this video is coming out late because all last week we kind of took turns having the flu and then we've had several rounds of fronts come through since then and so, and I cut the grass. <laughs> So now we're dealing with major allergies, so I have a lot of drainage going on, it affects my voice, um, so I'm going to try to get through this without clearing my throat too many times. But what I'm doing here is I have a clean jar, and I'm actually showing you in this clip how thick you're going to want your starter. But starting from the beginning, I had a clean jar, it doesn't have to be super sterile, it's just one that I had clean with soap and water and let it air dry, like it, it doesn't have to be super perfect. So I had a clean jar, and then I took about two to three tablespoons, I am using einkorn, fresh ground einkorn for my starter here. Um, <clears throat> you can use whatever flour you would like to use. My first starter was all-purpose flour. I currently still have that starter um, four years later, five years now. Maybe it's five years now, now that we're in 2024. Yeah, it's probably five years now. And um, I did all-purpose. Now, the different flours that you're going to use um, from after doing this with a whole, whole wheat flour, the different flowers you use seem to act differently with building your starter. So just kind of watch that. Um, if yours acts a little differently than mine does in this video, it's probably you're probably fine. It's not something you did. It, it's most likely just the type of flower you're using. Just give it some time. Be patient with it. So I started with two to three tablespoons of flour, and then I added a little bit of water. I don't really measure my water out because I know the consistency that I'm looking for. So what I showed earlier in this video is it was a very thick pancake batter like consistency. So I add just a little bit of water at a time. I start with a little bit when I start mixing it up, if it's still too dry, if it's too thick, um, if I see dry pockets of flour, I'll add a little bit more. And you do want to always use filtered water. It does not have to be warm. You probably don't really want ice cold. Room temperature is probably good. If you're getting it out of the refrigerator, um, <clears throat> make sure 
maybe let it sit out a little bit because the, that's going to be super cold and it's going to really stunt your starter if it's too cold. Because if you stick a starter in the refrigerator or somewhere really cold, it does slow everything way down. And since we're trying to build this starter up, we do want to keep it as active as possible. So make sure it's at least room temperature. It does not have to be warm though. Um, so add just a little bit of filtered water at a time till you get that consistency. Now what I did, see here I'm showing you that it was doubling, so this is like day four, it started doubling on me. Um, you are wanting to every day add two to three tablespoons of flour, add your little bit of water, mix it uh, every day at least once a day. You want to be building it up. You don't have to do a discard in between. This is again how I do it. I do not do a discard every time in between. Discard means you're taking some of it out to add more back in. I do not, I, I don't do that when I'm building up my starter um, until my jar starts getting really full. So um, just add a little bit, you know, your flour, your water every day. So on day three and four, mine started doubling. Now you're wanting to look for your starter to double because once your starter starts doubling, that means that it's strong enough and ready to make bread. That's what gives you the rise. Okay. Um, now, when I started my all-purpose flour starter, I did not have a premature doubling. Um, it was two weeks, and then it started doubling, and it stayed doubling consistently for another two weeks, and then I felt comfortable to make bread with it. This one at day three and four with it doubling, I call it premature doubling. And it will do that when it's getting a rush of yeast. So um, when you're doing your sourdough starter, I have been putting a lid on it, but I have not been screwing it tight. It's just sitting on top. There's enough um, air in that jar to have trapped some yeast and that yeast is gonna go into the water and the flour to start feeding on that. And that yeast um, co colonizing and feeding on that flour and water, that is what gives you the bubbles in your starter. That is what activates your starter. And that's going to end up being, that culture is what's going to end up being what helps you make your bread. So um, <clears throat> it had, since my jar wasn't very full at first, it had plenty of air in there. So I was okay putting a lid not tightening it, just setting it on top to keep the bugs out and leaving it set aside. Now, as my jar starts filling up a little bit more, I am going to switch out that top and I'm gonna put something breathable on top with a rubber band around it. And that is so the air can keep coming in and we keep trapping as much yeast as we can, but we're still not getting bugs in our starter. So um, when you're making a sourdough starter, when you're keeping your starter alive, like the big jar that I have um, on the counter that I have is actually an old pillowcase that I cut up. It was starting to shred and so I cut it up and I used that as my top with a, a rubber band. And that's something breathable. Um, you can use a coffee filter, you can use some kind of rag, just anything that's breathable you can put on top. And you wanna make sure the air gets in there because that's how you get your yeast and your yeast from your air is what's gonna help you make your bread. So sourdough starter is not hard. It does take time, it does take patience um, to build up and get it active to where you need it to do bread. But it is a, it's a God-given yeast. It's something that's natural in our air. It's something that truly 100% is God-given and God-created. And, you know, if you know anything about God, you know that he is patient. He is not fast moving. He is not on our time schedule. And that goes perfectly along with all of his creation. So we live in a very fast paced world, a very fast paced lifestyle. And, you know, everybody's talking about how they don't have time for sourdough. It takes too long. But again, this is a God given gift and a God given creation. And um, I personally feel like sourdough is something that helps us slow down. It helps us take a moment in our day, take a moment in our life, and it is something natural, it is something beautiful, it is something wholesome, and it helps us to slow down in the process of using it because that's actually very healthy for our bodies, just as healthy as this 
type of, um, of yeast is. So uh, fermentation, anything fermented, whether it's sourdough bread or if you're fermenting your vegetables or your fruits, anything like that, it's very healthy for your body. It's very healthy, high in probiotics and it's, it's very good to be in your diet. It really should in our diets be the bulk portion of our diets, but um, we've gotten away from fermented foods um, quite a few years ago, just in our culture. And so um, having some of those brought back into our diets will really ben our, benefit our bodies in a big way. Now this, that was a picture of a very active starter. It took my doing this einkorn it took a whole month for me to get to where I had all those bubbles. That jar was just filled, filled, filled with bubbles. It was doubling consistently for several days. And so, um, you know, like I said, with my all-purpose flour starter, it took two weeks. With this whole grain, fresh ground, einkorn flour starter, it took a whole month. So depending on what flour you're using, you might have um, a different timing on on how active your starter gets, how quickly. Um, so anyways, I took, <clears throat> my jar was getting quite full. It was doubling, I knew it was gonna kind of go out the jar. You do not, so, well, I made some uh, sourdough focaccia bread and I did uh, cinnamon roll style with it. So this is a pretty active starter that I'm using. Active meaning it had those bubbles, it was rising up. Um, <clears throat> and you do not have to have active um, with doing this. You can use a discard, discard meaning um, you don't really see any bubbles anymore. Maybe your starter had risen up and fallen all the way back down. There aren't really too many bubbles all in it that you can see. And so that means that it's, it's tired, it's eaten through um, all of the fresh flour and water you put in there. And so now it just needs to be refed. It's hungry again. And a, a spent starter, you might also see some liquid on top. Um, that's totally fine. That's your yeast. It's come up to the top and it's showing you hi. I'm, I'm on the top here because I'm hungry. I don't have any food underneath there for me to go back down to get. So um, if you see that, you can drain it off if you want to, but it's totally fine to just go ahead and mix that back in there and then go ahead and feed it with some more flour and water and you'll have a happy starter again. So what I did for this focaccia bread is I did 85 grams-ish of, I did use active starter, you can use a discard if you want to. Um, I did 85 grams, but if you go a few grams above that or underneath that, it's okay. It doesn't have to be super exact. Focaccia is a great first time sourdough bread because it's very forgiving and basically like extremely hands-off. There's no stretcher folds or anything fancy. Um, so then I did use 375 grams of room temperature water and that is filtered. Always use filtered, always use unbleached when you're dealing with sourdough. Uh, 20 grams of sweetener, I used honey. So I added 20 grams of honey and then I added 500 grams of flour 900 grams of salt and so what I did is I'm just mixing it all together here you can use a mixture if you want I did it by hand when you're making bread doing anything sourdough anything baking or cooking you don't need anything fancy to accomplish your end goal like you can just have a bowl and a fork if you want to like I'm using a Danish dough whisk here but you don't even have to have that like you can use whatever you have on hand so I'm mixing it up really good. It does start getting kind of firm. This is going to stay sticky. Um, this is going to stay kind of like a, a rugged dough or a rough dough, meaning it's not real smooth. It's not real silky. It kind of has some lumps in it. That's okay. This is focaccia and um, that, that this is just kind of the nature of, of doing this type of bread. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I have everything mixed up. I'm going to cover it now. You can cover it with plastic. Um, I'm using a de-wax uh, paper here. Uh, you can stick it in like a, a Walmart bag and tie up the end or something, but it is going to sit out. I let it sit out overnight because um, this does need to double and kind of rise up, get a, a good bulk ferment. I let it sit out overnight, so you want to make sure it's not going to dry out, so do something it won't dry out on. And then... Um, 
Oh, actually, no, this is night here. So what I did was it sat on the counter all day long. So I mixed it up that morning, it sat on the counter all day long. And now I have some oil here. I'm using avocado oil. You can use whatever oil you like. And you want to oil your pan very, 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 very well. If you think you have enough oil, add more oil. Like I even needed more oil in this. And so what I'm doing, this sat out on the counter all day long. Now I'm gonna put it in this um, lasagna pan here. And it's very well oiled, which like I said, I didn't end up needing more oil. So you do want to oil it very, very well, especially on the bottom, because you don't want it to stick on the bottom too much. And so I'm flattening it out, kind of spreading it. You don't have to be rough about it. Again, um, with sourdough, <clears throat> like if you're doing bread, like a, a loaf or something, a lot of people talk about punching the dough down. You do not want to do that with sourdough, no matter what kind of bread you're making. Those bubbles, you don't want to bust those bubbles because those bubbles are what's going to be your fluff and your rise. And so you don't want to be rough with your sourdough. You don't want to discourage those bubbles from forming or break them. You want to keep them. So I spread this out really good, and um, I don't know if you know anything about focaccia, but you know you stick your fingers in to make those big bubbles. Um, that didn't have to happen right there just perfect because I am going to be doing it again. But I covered it, let it sit overnight. I covered it with plastic and I put a lid on top. It sat on the counter overnight. Now this next morning I'm melting some butter. I'm going to add some souk in it. It can be whatever sweetener you like to use. Um, again, this part right here is to make it a cinnamon roll. You don't have to do cinnamon roll. You can, you know, put vegetables, herbs, anything you want on top, maybe some salt, and then just bake it that way. Just have focaccia. But we did cinnamon roll focaccia. So I added souk in it, some cinnamon, butter. I melt it all together um, on low heat on the stove, get it all nice and melted, cooked together, and then I'm going to just be pouring that on top. Again, if you're not, if you don't want to do the cinnamon roll style, you don't have to do it that way. You can just sprinkle, um, you know, some larger pieces of salt on top or whatever topping you want and then just bake it. So this is, I'm taking the plastic off <clears throat> from it sitting overnight and I'm going to use my fingers and I'm going to start doing those big bubbles, just lightly pushing everything down. Now, one mistake I made here is I needed to add oil to my fingers. I needed to add a little bit of oil on top of the dough because it was sticking to my fingers a little bit and this dough had risen so much that it stuck a little bit to the top edge of this pan and I didn't have that oiled very well and so it does stick. I mean it, it was fine cleaning it up. It, it came off fine but um, it did stick a little bit and so I put my fingers in. You just push down to the bottom just real gentle and um, you know, made some big indentions. It makes big bubbles. It's really fun to do, actually. And then I'm gonna pour this cinnamon roll um, mixture on top of it. It doesn't get super perfect, uh, you know, real even or anything. Most of it kind of pulls in the middle, but you know, you can do it however you prefer to do it. I wasn't worried about being perfect with it. I was just trying to get it done so we could have a nice little treat. Um, for in the morning. Now this was pretty sweet even though it was sourdough. It was pretty sweet. So um, I don't know about doing this for necessarily a breakfast again but if you're going to dinner somewhere or you're having people over and you're not sure what to do for dessert this would actually be a really great dessert idea because it was um, it was pretty sweet and pretty filling too. So I just pour this on top. <clears throat> I do try to spread it out a little bit better. You can see it just kind of puddles and pools in all of the holes that I did. So I do try to spread it out a little bit. Um, it does stay in the middle for the most part. And then I'm just pressing my fingers down in it again. And so this is working some of that liquid into the dough and, um, and helping spread it a little bit too. So you just want to um, push it in, make those big bubble indentions. It feels really neat. It's kind of fun to do. And then I do have the oven preheating to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to be sticking it in the oven to bake at that temperature for 20 to 25 minutes. I believe mine was in my oven for about 22 minutes. Um, it like I did it till it was kind of like a golden brown, but it depends on your oven, 
how hot it is, how fast it cooks, and it also depends on if you want it a little more crispy. So focaccia bread, it is crispier on the outside and then really soft and fluffy on the inside. So uh, we do tend to cook ours on the lower end of the time. And then here I am just making the icing for the cinnamon rolls. It is some, um, some powdered sugar, a little bit of vanilla, and a, I added a little bit of water and I'm gonna mix it until I get the consistency that I want. If I need more water, I can always add more water, but I do start with just a little bit first because um, it, the, a little bit of water in making this icing does go a long way. So in here, I'm just mixing it all really, really, really good, and I'll show you the consistency here in a minute. Right there, that's about what I want. Um, if you would like yours a little thicker, you just add a little bit more of the powdered sugar, and then that will thicken up. And this is the uh, sourdough focaccia, cinnamon roll focaccia. It's fresh out of the oven. If you want yours to cool off a little bit more, of course, let it just sit there and cool off um, so your icing doesn't completely melt. But I actually like it where the icing kind of melts into the bread, gets in all those crevices and holes, and it kind of it just gets absorbed into the focaccia. So I go ahead and put it on when it's still pretty warm, like it's still bubbling on the edges. And, um, and just let it, let it melt and let it work its way into the bread before I serve it.